Welcome Star Wars fans to episode 8 of Tatooine Sons. This week, we're sharing our thoughts on Carrie Fisher's final performance as Princess Leia. Lucasfilm released a synopsis for Solo a Star Wars Story. We'll discuss what it does and doesn't say. And after months of anticipation, Disney gave us a mid-season trailer for the final episodes of Star Wars Rebels. Let's just say we're pretty excited. Our long-awaited meeting has come at last. It's time for Tatooine Sons. The Force is strong in my family. I am your father. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Welcome, Star Wars fans. This is Tatooine Sons, your weekly look into all things Star Wars. From the unique perspective of a father sharing his love for the amazing space fantasy saga with his two sons. I am BB Nate, and I'm joined first by my brother, Samuel the Hutt. Uh, true to Stars fans, uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'm not entirely sure what I, I was going to say today. So That's, that's what happens when you wake up late. Anyway. Late, and go to bed late, and everything. It's just, I'm okay. off. I'm off. Great <laughs> opening, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hopefully and, the rest of the podcast isn't this bad. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you can have Star Wars without bizarre father figures, so on that note, here's my dad, the Bowtie Jedi guy. All right, guys. Um, so, what are you yawning for? Mm-hmm. Oh. We're not going to do this today. Okay. Um, welcome. We're excited about this episode. <laughs> um, even if we don't sound like it at the beginning, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna muscle through this and have a great time. We're doing two podcasts this morning. This will be the first time we've ever done that. We got our regular podcast, which is the one you're listening to. It's our public podcast. But something pretty awesome happened yesterday, which is the release of the Star Wars uh, season four, mid-season trailer. I mean, it's like a tongue twister trying to get it out. Right. And so we're doing something special for our patrons on Patreon. So what are we doing? BB Nate, what are we going to be doing for them after we finish this episode? What are we going to be recording for them? Uh, About a 15 to 20 minute uh, podcast for just the Patreon supporters about the season four Rebels mid-season trailer. Yeah, so we're, we're going to be, be talking about our thoughts and everything else, which is pretty cool because one of the things that has sort of, you know, bound, bound us to the Star Wars trilogy and is, Star Wars saga is Star Wars Rebels. That's how you guys yeah. sort of, re- I mean, you guys saw the movies and they were okay, but we got into Star Wars Rebels and that's when things started to really open up for you guys as right. The Force Awakens came out and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we're yeah. pretty excited. If you're not a Patreon supporter, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, this is an awesome podcast. We're getting reviewed by other podcast services. We're getting, um, we had record week on our podcast. I don't know if I mentioned that to the guys, but no. <laughs> uh, Thursday we had the most downloads in the history of our podcast. And by about one o'clock yesterday, we had equaled that again. And so yesterday became the, 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 the most downloaded day in the history of our podcast. And uh, we've got a lot of people to support or uh, to thank for that. That's you guys that are listening. Thank you so much for listening and sharing. And yeah, woo! Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, but we got some other people we want to thank before we get too far into this. And that's our new supporters on Patreon. Um, you guys are why we can do what we do. We just opened up uh, the podcast to being supported through Patreon on last episode a week ago, and we've already reached our first month's. Um, Income goal, I'll explain sort of how that worked out because if you go on our Patreon page, it only says $11 raised or pledged. I'll explain why we've reached our numbers on that. First of all, we want to thank Bradley Hall. Um, he's We've mentioned it before as far as his Twitter handle, but this is an outside of Twitter thing that we're going to do right here. Bradley, thank you so much for being our supporter. Uh, Patrick um, Loudhead. Patrick is an awesome guy that we met through Twitter. Um, he's in Ireland. Um, he's become a huge fan of ours, and we just absolutely love Patrick and what he does. He works with a charity out in Ireland that helps with the homeless, and um, it's just an awesome yeah. story there. Yeah. Um, Steve Kirk. Steve Kirk, you are the bomb because you are a fellow podcaster from San Diego hey. Sabres um, <laughs> podcast. That's a cool name. And um, yeah, they're an awesome podcast. They're part of the Star Wars uh, podcast or Commonwealth oh, really? um, podcast. And you supported us. Thank you so much for doing that. I love from a fellow podcaster. And here's what's cool too, is they do star uh, lightsaber duel training and battles down in San Diego. Steve has invited us to come down there sometime for one of their duels and watch. And maybe we can do a special Patreon podcast from their pod. Yeah, you should bring your lightsaber. I should bring my lightsaber. Why are we not like going? We should go right after the podcast. 
Because I don't know when their next saber duel is, well, and it's not this that. afternoon. Okay, uh, Neil, Neil Lowry, Neil, oh, yeah, Neil, you are a huge uh, uh, supporter of Star Wars and podcasts. <laughs> but one thing that we love about you, Neil, is that you have made it your mission in life to be the most positive, um, giving Star Wars fan that we have ever known. Oh yeah, and so thank you so much, Neil. I know that there are hundreds of people on on Twitter. That that absolutely look forward to when you tweet something because it's always positive and encouraging versus yeah. sort of the craziness that's existed within <laughs> Star Wars since the last Jedi came out. Thank you for that. And then Rebecca Diaz, uh, we've given a shout out to you before on Twitter as well, um, or your Twitter handle. But thank you, Rebecca. You were our first. You were our first patron hey. on Patreon. So Ooh, thank you. Hey. Let's give her a big hand. All of our patrons. You guys are awesome. You don't have like an applause sound effect. We, I've, I've deleted it for for Han Solo because Han Solo is cooler than applause. That's true. Okay. And so with these are and plus a sound effect is one thing. Really, real applause from the Tatooine Suns. That's true. Is more important. Okay. Um, so I mentioned that we've reached our January goal. That's because um, another Twitter user, um, he has um, a really cool Twitter handle. He was called Poor Delicious. Um, for a long time, um, he's out of Virginia. I think he's a college student out in Virginia, if I'm not mistaken. And then he's, um, let me see if I can find you real quick. Your Twitter handle, yep, there it is. Porg Strong. Um, his name listed on that is ASAP Porg, but this S is a dollar sign. Um, and it's a it's a hilarious Twitter uh, feed now. He's decided to make it sort of a parody comedy uh, Twitter feed. He's awesome. But he asked us last week to help him out. Um, tweeting regarding a friend of his that had beat cancer, a big Star Wars fan, yeah. and uh, part of this group of 501st Legion, um, uh, you know, a family of them that that supported her and helped her and, and charitably f- helped her with her her battle with cancer. And she beat it, and they threw a big party for her. 501st did, and um, he her- asked. Then they gave her like a pink star stormtrooper yeah. helmet because she defeated uh, breast cancer. And so we're really excited because what that um, uh, did, he asked us to, to tweet those pictures. Yeah. Um, and he asked us, he said, you know, he would, he would uh, make a donation to uh, the podcast in order to do that. We told him not to. Um, we said we would tweet those because they were tweet worthy um, for sure. And his asking us to do that was an honor to celebrate yeah. her victory over cancer. But um, what he ended up doing was even beyond that. He gave a donation in the name of Tatooine Sons to the organization. Um, that uh, helped her uh, mm-hmm. through this cause or this fight. And then he also made a $25 donation to our podcast as his way of saying thank you. And we never expected that. We didn't need it. No. Um, we, we don't want to, you know, tweets like that. That's something that we'll do just because it's deserving of celebration. Absolutely. Uh, but thank you so much, uh, yeah. uh, ASAP Porg, Porg Strong, uh, for your gift there. And then we got a review. And I meant to leave it up. Okay, some of you guys talk amongst yourself for a second. I have to find iTunes. Get iTunes up. Here, we'll use this to discuss the new DLC. Yay! Oh! That didn't get in the list today. You guys have got to warn me about that. Talk we'll about do, we'll quickly DLC. discuss it. Okay. DLC, Starfront Battlefront 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2, Resurrection, DLC. Uh, Amazing. Extra bonus conversation between BB Nate and Samuel the Hutt. No. Uh, spoiler alerts, though, in yeah. case you haven't played it. Um, we're, we're not caring if, if you hear something that... You've been warned. Anyway. Wait, wait, there's a spoiler here? Yeah. Well, yeah. well awesome. Hold on. We're going to do this. First okay, off, continue. this podcast is a little bit all over the place. It's been know. awesome. They're gonna, it's going to be our best podcast ever. Right? All right. Go. So, that was a fun one. It, yes, was, it, sh- was. it was obviously it was shorter than well, the campaign. It, it had but... a, I haven't played that yet. You no, but played you it, watched, but you've seen it. You, you've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. You get it, the idea. I haven't played the... Uh, uh, long story short... They, wait, her home, what was it, Vardos? Yes. Is like completely deserted and... Destroyed. Whatever. It's getting destroyed. S- um, Del's dead. We yes, Del's Yeah, but we need that from the campaign. Uh, towards the end, let's see, you kill Hask. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was a fun, like, that scene where you shoot, that was interesting. Anyway, and uh, Aiden dies. Mm-hmm. What?! Yeah, that's why I said spoiler. Janina! She's gone. That's her real name. Oh. <laughs> but they found... It was cool because it tied into The Last Jedi like oh, perfectly. so much. So basically they found these plans for the... Uh, oh my goodness. 
Dreadnought. Dreadnought, Dreadnought. Yeah. yeah. They found the plants with the Dreadnought saying, like, figuring out where its weak points are. And they got it to the Resistance um, in a TIE fighter. And they are almost going to get shot or whatever when they when they came in. But um, they get, they transmitted the plans. And then Leia was like, all right, well, we got a mission for you. Uh, go off. So they literally like, jumped, dropped the plans off to the Resistance, and then jumped out right before The Last Jedi starts. So that's kind of a that's a really brief overview of the campaign. That's pretty awesome, Nathan. Uh, what did DLC. you think about what did you think about the Resurrection DLC? It was it was good. It was very. It kind of laid heavily. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. the first uh, campaign, it's just Iden's alive. Iden's happy at the end. Mm. She's living with her daughter, oh, and then oh, yeah. she, at the end of the Resurrection. She dies. She's dead. Her daughter is. We. What, what is her daughter? Do- are, are they going to continue the campaign? Oh, the yeah. DLCs with the daughter now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what would they do? How are they going to update it? Well, there's going to be a whole other storyline between episodes eight and nine that they can continue with. Yeah, or they can just have their own little thing. We'll see. It was pretty awesome. Maybe. It was cool. Anyway, All right. congratulations. Woo. You got a bonus podcast listeners all right so here's the deal uh we've got um we want to start reading reviews that have been have come in on itunes uh we're pretty excited about the reviews that you guys give us we're so um grateful for it we'll read other ones that have come in already um as we go forward because we don't get reviews every single week and there's a few on here we want to read but last week we did get a new review from my oh my two zero one one and that's my m y o like the Letter O. M Y. M Y. Two zero one one. My oh my two zero one one. Titled "The Force is Strong." All caps. So I had to verbalize that because they can't uh, see it. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. The Force yeah. is strong in this family. I subscribe to quite a few Star Wars podcasts, but there are just a few that I will not miss. This one being one of those podcasts. Wow. Yeah, pretty awesome. That's it's cool. enjoyable to hear a dad and his sons talk about their love of Star Wars. If you're looking for a family-friendly Star Wars podcast, this is the one. Give them a listen. What do you guys think? That about sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> like, it checks all the boxes. Right. We're a family. I mean, this is what we hoped for when we started out eight yep. episodes ago doing this podcast at the beginning of December. Our goal was to make this a family-friendly Podcast right. about Star Wars. Not right. that you know. I mean, there's a lot of podcasts out there where people are dropping you know f bombs and that's you know whatever. That's that's what they do. That's their thing. Um, and you know, I've I've listened to some of those podcasts because they've got great Star Wars content, and I just know what I'm getting into uh, with it. But we wanted to make a podcast that dads and moms and their kids could sit around the table. In fact, I'm remembered of Lou Holt on Twitter. Um, he runs a, a house for foster children in oh. Texas. He's a a really cool guy. That's cool. And he found our podcast and he was talking about how um, he was so excited to find something he could listen to with his foster kids. Oh, and so last week he so sent cool. us a Twitter um, a Twitter message saying that on Monday morning they sat around the breakfast table as a family, uh, him and his foster kids and his wife, and they listened to our podcast and they loved it. And so that's, that's what so we're shooting cool. for. So thank you, my that's oh so my cool. 21, uh, 20, blah, 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 blah. my Ooh. oh my 2011 and Lou Holt and all the others that are supporting us. Um, we are 14, 15, 15 minutes into it. But hey, you guys deserve the love yeah. because we can't do this podcast without you. That's true. Let's talk. Star Wars. Star Wars. Well, we've been kind of talking yeah. Star Wars. Let's talk about our poll oh, yeah. uh, from last week. I'm not ready to talk about our poll from last week. Because um, it's just like a really how crazy here, 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 Let's talk about how the porg should have been the main thing about The Last Jedi. Go for it real quick. I'm going to pull up Don't the poll. Gosh, they sh- they should day. have been the best part about that movie. They, they were. They, they were, but they should have been more. They, they should, should have more. saved the galaxy accidentally. Ah, here we go. Okay, okay good. All right. So there we go. You got two bonuses. Hey, and Porg Nation, you just got Porg Talk from BB <laughs> Nate. So, all right. Uh, okay. Tatooine Sons Podcast. Last week we asked, help us answer this burning. And we have fire. Question about Star Wars Rebels Season 4. Which rebel do you think will become one with the Force when Rebels returns on February 24th? Let's stop and acknowledge the fact that the date that we had been hearing about the return of Star Wars Rebels Season 4 was wrong. It's not coming out February 24th, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, We had 205 votes. Not bad. bad. Yeah, we didn't. I mean, it wasn't as much as the the one from week four. Five hundred and fifty by the time it was done. 
But anyway, 200 votes, 205 votes, and 69%. Who do you think they picked? Kanan. Kanan Jarrus. We'll talk about I, that I, when we get to the Rebels reaction or the Rebels reaction podcast for our patrons because that may not be we may have found out we're dead wrong. Eighteen uh, percent Ezra dead wrong. You like that? You see how I threw that in there? Uh, don't ever make that joke again. Yeah, I didn't even make a joke. It was just something I said. Oh, okay. And then I made uh, a joke. It was just like I mean, dad jokes just come naturally for me. Okay, eighteen uh, percent uh, chose Ezra, nine percent chose Sabine, and four percent chose Zeb. So yeah, the poll right. results seem to believe that the, that Star Wars Rebels fandom thinks Kanan's going to die in the first episode. We'll talk about that on the reaction episode for our patrons a little bit later today. All right. Hey, um, I mean, if you want to watch the podcast, you just got to, what is it, a dollar a month? Yeah. One dollar a pledge. Yeah. A month. In fact, just you don't even month. have to pay it today. It like doesn't even process till the end of January. So right. just subscribe, okay? <laughs> or, or support us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's talk about our first topic. Our first topic is going to be Carrie Fisher's final performance as Leia. The first topic is going to be Leia's character arc. More about Carrie Fisher and how... They decided not to take her... They were going to end, um, like, kind of take out some of her spots and just put a little bit in to just end yeah. it, Leia and The Last Jedi. But they they watched it over again, and they said that it would have been... Taking out Carrie Fisher, it would have been... Carrie Fisher's last performance would have been in full, yeah. and it would have not yeah. been as honorable for her so they decided not to and so samuel hutt what did you think about that so well, before we go i mean the the natural spot mm-hmm. to end princess leia's life if they were going to do it in that movie was when she gets sucked out of the bridge when the tie fighters yeah. take out the bridge on the uh, yeah but that wouldn't have been emotionally resonant well we would have lost so much imagine how i mean that's the whole point um first of all we don't get to see Princess Leia used the Force. That was cool. Carrie Poppins. Carrie Poppins. But I, I think that that's a, like, you know, people are frustrated about that. We've never seen that before. Well, we have. You know, in a little ways. Kanan uses it a little bit in uh, Rebels. He, he more like just pulls himself on yeah, the shit. Yeah, I'm telling you. I, I watched it and I think it's, I think he uses it. Um, if that's what you think. I do. But I'm right. You can I'm have your opinion even if it's wrong. You know, that, well, yeah, true. You, know, you don't have to agree with me. You don't have to be right. Um... <laughs> And then, um, you know, the whole crate stuff and the reunion with Luke. Yeah. Yeah. They said that was a big part of it. So, what did you think about overall? I mean, we've seen all of the, um, you know, you guys have obviously seen all the movies and we've seen Carrie Fisher. Wait, I have. Yeah, a couple times. Um, <laughs> we've seen Carrie Fisher's performances in four, five, six, and seven. Seven was a little weak. I think we can all agree. The Force Awakens performance seemed a little weird at times. It's made fun of. Best bad lip reading on the planet. Oh, yes. yes. So what? Are, okay. All right. I'm gonna oh, make no. them do it. No. no. Do it. Come on. You guys have got to do Which it. Which one? The, the the whole uh, solo oh. thing. Oh. Oh. You okay. got to do it. This right, is like right. gonna be the best, the highest rated part of our podcast in history. I hope. This will this will make. So if you haven't seen bad lip reading of the Force Awakens, you've got to go. Watch it. Yeah, now we're plugging bad lip reading. But that's all, it's <laughs> that's worth it. That's the best one. Yet. All right, pause the podcast, go watch that, and then yeah. come back to us and listen to oh, this. Geez. Go for it. Who's so low? You. Okay. This morning I wanted a frat, and they wouldn't make it. You always don't need a frat. But it makes me happy. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> he forgets it. Just keep going. Keep going, Sam. Seriously, there's got to be something that makes you happy. No. A pickle. No. The zoo. No. no. Poop on a stick. That's <laughs> Poop disgusting. On a stick. That's disgusting. Six kittens in a bag of water. <laughs> uh, you're weird. <laughs> oh, this has totally gone off uh, the trail. We, we still have more. Oh, this wait, keep going. Keep going. Wait, there's more. Yeah. What? I like monkeys. <laughs> You're the monkey. monkey. <laughs> so, and oh, here's why like, we brought that. This is our worst one yet. No, this is I'm, the best. <laughs> okay, here's what's funny about that is the reason uh, that bad lip reading works is because Carrie Fisher's performance was so weak. 
And it, it's probably because of the writing. Yeah, the writing and just the lines that she hadn't acted in years. Yeah. In anything. Yeah. And she was terrified from what I understand about oh. coming back and doing this. She was so nervous. And she watched the movie after you know it was finished and she was very disappointed in her performance from what I understand. Mm. And that's why she partnered with Ryan Johnson on the writing of her character. Ryan Johnson, when we were at Star Wars Celebration in April of last year, 2017, yeah, yeah. talked about the fact that Carrie helped co-write the lines and helped him understand the character right. of Princess Leia better. And it worked. And yeah. so you can imagine how hard that was when she dies of a heart attack at the end of mm. last uh, 2016. Uh, and then they've got to figure out what to do. And they realize that the majority of her best acting as Princess Leia... Was in The Last Jedi. Was in The Last yeah. Jedi after the Carrie Poppins scene. Right, So if they right. kill her off as Carrie Poppins and she then doesn't get to come back... you her final performance. You're losing it and you're losing the reunion with Luke. Yeah. And what do you... Th- I mean, fans no, reunion. are blowing their minds with this Last Jedi craziness. What kind of craziness would have happened if there would have been no reunion between Luke and Leia? BB Nate, how would fans have reacted to that? They, they would have been very angry. They're already angry. Well, but, um, they would have been livid. Like, there yeah. would have been riots almost. Right. One of the big criticisms of The Force Awakens by a lot of fans was that there was no reunion between Luke, Han, and Leia yeah. in that movie. And so we couldn't get Han anymore. No. <laughs> but we get Luke and Leia is what they were hoping. And if they would have changed that... Here's what... I was looking at the article on Screen Rant that's quoting... Um, Ryan Johnson. Here's what he says. We discussed it briefly and I spoke with Kathy when we came back after New Year's. We watched through her scenes and there was briefly a talk of, God, do we just adjust something so that we give her some kind of end in this movie? I felt strongly that we shouldn't do that for a couple of reasons. We have a beautiful, complete performance from her and that final moment is so powerful for her and for us saying goodbye to her. And also, I can't imagine anything that we would be able to manufacture without having Carrie that would have emotionally been satisfying. I definitely... Uh, definitely, I have no idea what would maintain that scene better between her and Luke or the scene in the Falcon. Um, at, the scene at the end in the Falcon being when she's talking with Ray about Luke's death. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we just decided to let it lie. I know JJ is going to come up with a way to resolve her in the next movie. We'll talk about that last sentence in a second. Overall, are you happy that they left things the way that they were in the last chapter Absolutely. when it comes to Gary yes. Fisher's performance? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the people that want to remove it from canon... Are, yeah. are removing the movie of Carrie Fisher's last performance. Carrie Fisher's last performance. Carrie, Carrie Fisher's yeah, last performance. Yeah, I said that a couple podcasts ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not selfish. right. And, yeah, no. They, so, they kept it. They did the right thing. Okay. What about the last line from Ryan? I know JJ is going to come up with a way to resolve her He's in the next movie. He's going to cut out for him, that's for sure. Well, I'm not, not necessarily. I've given him the perfect re- resolution. I've oh, said that's this true. already. That's true. JJ, you're listening, right? We Kathy... Know- our buddy Kathy Kennedy, because yeah. we go, we yeah. call you Kathy. You don't, you're not Kathleen to us. No, no. Um, Dave, I mean, we know Dave Filoni. He's yeah, speaking, you know, oh, yeah. he we speaks into some of this stuff. Dave, stuff. if you're listening, yeah. uh, we got. I mean, gosh, I mean, we hung out together at Star Wars for like a whole forty five seconds. Yeah, yeah forty five seconds. Amazing. Um, at celebration, <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, JJ listens to this podcast because oh, because we give the best advice in Star Wars. <laughs> um, here's how. You resolve this, JJ. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. The resolution is simple. Uh, Lucasfilm graphic comes up on the screen in silence. And if you're listening to this podcast, you don't know that I just did this really cool thing with my hands. Uh, if you're watching on, on YouTube or on um, Facebook Live, you got to see that. So, All right. Uh, so we do this cool thing with our hands. Uh, Lucasfilm graphic. Uh, blue words a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Traditionally, is the Star Wars theme kicks in and the Star Wars logo comes on the screen. Stop it with the hands. I'm telling you a great <laughs> moment here. Um, and and um, uh, okay. instead of the music com- coming on, dead silence. Right. And as the title crawl comes up the screen, episode nine, whatever the title is, the uh, first words on the screen are General Leia Organa is dead. And instead of playing the Star Wars theme, you play Leia's I don't theme. think you can do it much better than that. And you let her have that most... The, Star Wars is known. The saga movies are known for the title crawl. It's one of the And most, that opening. If not and if you change the opening of Episode Nine, 
to acknowledge Leia's death and honor Leia and Carrie Fisher with Leia's theme, then you have honored her in the most significant way you can in a Star Wars movie. So that's how you do this. There you go, JJ. There we go, JJ. There you go. All right. Next topic is what is it? Solo. We finally have a solo update. Yeah. All right. I get to talk about this one, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So I get the shortest topic of the day because <laughs> um, finally we get something. We haven't gotten a trailer yet. Uh-huh. Everybody thinks we're getting a trailer. Um, when? Our, well, there was some speculation it was going to come. We might get it the week before it comes out. <laughs> well, if we get it on at all. Right. We'll save that for later. Um, so there were some rumors that it was going to be during the NFC, AFC championship games this weekend. Nope. Our friends over at Star Wars News Net, which we absolutely love. You guys absolutely. are awesome. Resist it. Absolutely. I did a Sean Connery there. Jesus. Um, absolutely love uh, John uh, Hoey and uh, the Resistance broadcast from Star Wars yeah. Newsnet broke yesterday that they have um, an insider that has told them <laughs> that it is not coming during the NFC AFC Championship Games this weekend, um, but coming very, very soon. I think they're just going to announce it next week, that it's coming, and then put it on Good Morning America. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the official synopsis for Solo, a Star Wars story. It's true. All of it. When you have Han Solo sound effects... Because understand. he's the coolest character in Star Wars. I don't care what you say. No. All right, here we go. Um, here's where the, This is from StarWars.com. Here's where the fun begins. The official synopsis for Solo. You gotta uh, do it in your podcast. Your all right, we'll do it this way. I'm gonna be like the uh, the announcers of the podcast, the pod oh, racer nice. scene uh, in uh, episode one, A Phantom Menace. All right, here's where the fun begins. The official synopsis for Solo, a Star Wars story, was revealed today, offering some new details on the upcoming film. Board the Millennium Falcon and journey to a galaxy far, far away in Solo, a Star Wars story. An all-new adventure with the most beloved scoundrel in the galaxy. Through a series of daring escapades deep within a dark and dangerous criminal underworld, Han Solo meets his mighty future co-pilot Chewbacca and encounters the notorious gambler Lando Calrissian in a journey that will set the course of one of the Star Wars saga's most unlikely heroes. All right. That worked. Ta-da. <laughs> Let's talk about what it says and what it doesn't say. Is there anything in this synopsis that surprises you? BB no. Nate. <laughs> not really. No. Not, you just suddenly became BB Nate? Yes. I asked him first. This is what happens in our house all the time, folks. I asked Nathan a question. Well, I mean, you do confuse our names a lot, too. Yeah, I called him BB Nate and I looked at him this time. All right, BB Nate, anything in this that you thought you didn't know was going to happen in this movie? No. (laughs) So why do you think that they gave us this synopsis? Tell To say that they gave something. (laughs) (laughs) To to, to basically say we did something this week? Hey, we did. (laughs) It's not a trailer, but it's something. All right, uh, Samuel the Hutt, I am addressing you. Your thoughts on the synopsis? Anything in there that that surprised you or anything like that? Mm, Not really. Okay. It's pretty standard. Pretty much everything. Millennium Falcon. Chewbacca. Chewbacca, Lando. Lando, How are they going to explain? Scoundrel. Yeah. How are they going to explain uh, seeing the Millennium Falcon in episode three? The scene of the Millennium Falcon in episode three? Well, we know that the ship is old. Okay, so explain Nate, be Nate, explain that scene because our listeners may be unaware that the Millennium Falcon is present in Revenge of the Sith. Go. Well, they're, I forget what time it is. It's when they're coming in on the yes. shuttle right after they crash the ship or whatever. They're about yes, to meet. The, like, yeah. Okay, so it's like right after the first big long scene. Yeah. Uh, they take out Grievous's ship. Or they take out Grievous. Another again, half the time. ship. Um, halfway, you know, they rescue the Emperor, Count Dooku gets killed by Anakin, they the ship is flying, you know we're, we're, still, we're still, still flying half the ship what's the, the line, you know, Anakin's like you know, I, I guess, can you fly this thing, Obi-Wan asks him, he's like uh, I think what you want, want to know is whether or not I can land this thing, and flying, you know this thing has become irrelevant, or something like that and they land it, and they get on the shuttle to go back to the Senate Yeah. Mm-hmm. and as we're looking at the Senate area Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like right in like the bottom right corner when they're it's, flying. It's like very brief though. Very brief. But it, isn't it confirmed that it yeah, was Yeah, we were watching it 
a few months ago and BB Nate saw the Millennium Falcon and I then began to beat myself up because I didn't notice the most iconic and awesome ship in <laughs> all of science fiction yeah. anytime I've watched this before. I think what Nathan was trying to ask is how they're going to resolve that is it doesn't look like the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon. It looks like the one you see yeah. ooh, at... And okay, we'll come back to the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon in a second. Okay, so we see the Millennium Falcon, so we need to resolve the changes yeah. on that. Okay, yeah. So let's talk about what's not. Okay, well, I guess the Millennium Falcon is um, in this, so we can talk about that here. So the Millennium Falcon is in this. It's in the synopsis, right? It is. Board the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Um, but according to the leaked images of the Lego solo Star Wars story set of the Millennium Falcon, don't talk about the title on that yet. We'll talk about that Good. in a minute. The, well, we'll come back to it. Millennium, that Millennium Falcon looks different. Wow. Very different. What are some of the differences on it? The it's, front is closed. There's no those little prongs in the front. It's filled in. And then uh, it's got a different paint job. Yeah, it's like white and blue. Blue. As opposed to like I mean, I, I, gray I, of course red. I like it. No, Saint Nate, baby Nate's favorite color is blue. So. The antenna is different again. <laughs> yeah. Hey, in, in Last Jedi, the Millennium Falcon's antenna did get shot off that's true. for the third time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I guess it's a it's a peril of that antenna. So they could so. change that thing out with any antenna. Uh, but anyway, so it looks like it, but it looks like the original trilogy episode four for the most part. Yeah, it's Millennium it's Falcon. Gray. The antenna may be different, but it's gray. It's, gray. it's got the prongs separated. Yeah, and then the one in the Lego sets that have been leaked looks different. So what that tells me is that the Lego leak is probably not accurate. I got a bad feeling about this. Maybe. Because if it is, then we have a problem. <laughs> because continuity, a lot of it. The, we, we, yeah, that's... The, yeah, we, we may have problem. a plot hole continu- that's a, continuity that's problem a, on that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, okay, that's interesting. Pablo, what is the, I know you're listening to. Yeah, Pablo, different. we'll ask you about that. Yeah, you're okay, different, but right? we'll have to wait until you actually we actually see some official Star Wars That's release true. of the this trailer. Millennium Falcon, and when we see it, if it looks like if it looks like the Lego leak, then we've got a continuity problem, and we'll talk to Pablo. They'll about probably that. just release some quick one-off comic to fix it. They probably will. That's cool. Okay, so what's the name of that? Hold on. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Okay, so we're getting ready to talk some spoilers from the set, the leak that are a little bit more intense than just the look of the Millennium Falcon. What's the name of it on the Lego set? The Millennium Falcon. The Kessel, Kessel Run, Run Millennium Falcon. Falcon. Okay. Which is one of the, like, my top things I need to see. Yeah. Like what, what? Three, if there's three things I need to see in the Solo movie, it's the Kessel Run. Okay. I have to see the Kessel Absolutely. Run. I have to see how Han and Chewie meet. Well, well, yeah. and, yeah. they, and the synopsis says it's that that's going to happen. That. Yeah. That's awesome. And I have to see how he gets the Millennium Falcon. I think he wins it from him in a game of Spock, in Lando. Right? So I think we've got confirmation of those two things in this. But we need the third the one being the Kessel Run. But it's not mentioned in the synopsis. What well, do you guys think about that? Well, there was a picture by this is obviously Ron speculation. But okay, so Howard. yeah, but there, there was the Ron. It's Howard got this photos. picture of it looks like a, an elevator going down to a mine shaft, and, and he asks, he puts one word on there: spicy. Question mark. Ooh, I'm looking for it right now. Spice Minds of Cast. Oh, you hear uh, um, C-3PO in the beginning of episode four when yeah. he's worried about getting captured. Yeah. He's like, he'll, they'll send us to the Spice Minds of Kessel. Okay, we'll put the we'll put the link to this Ron Howard tweet stuff. Uh, we'll put that in uh, in our show notes. So if you guys are listening to it, you can find it in the show notes. But I'm looking for it right now. So go ahead, Nate. Um, there was a picture. I, I, all the pictures of that article I looked really closely of just to see if there's going to be any little details I could find. And I found one detail. It was the picture where he said Chewie is inspecting the movie with me. Oh, yeah. And, like, Chewie's standing there. And then if you look at the scene that he's inspecting, it's, like, Han and Chewie having their heads together like they're about to, like, separate. Or, like, hmm. h- hugging. Like, something uh, like tragic just happened. Like they're really... Well, that can't happen. Obviously. Yeah, th- let's talk about the pictures that Ron Howard put out. First of all, um, you know we've been saying people have been saying that um, there's not been any information come out about the Han Solo movie. <laughs> but if you look at Ron Ho- Ron Howard's Twitter feed since he became the director, he's got some stuff. There's some information. That's there's out. one picture I really like. Which one is that? We talked about last week. No. Okay. What is it? It's not even like one that reveals anything. I just thought it was funny. So he's like, he has, he, you see him holding this little, like, three-year-old's 
Chewbacca action figure. Oh, I'm looking at it right now. And, he, and he's like, um, yeah, I'm sitting here using action figures to um, to work out. It says out action right. figures really help us figure yeah. out high octane action for untitled Han Solo movie. Yes, folks, this is my day job. Right. And, and I like how... I just find that funny. We're, 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 you're doing these like intense action scenes for this awesome movie, and you're using little action figures to and act it out. I, <laughs> I like how he has two pictures of him wearing booties on a skateboard. On a skateboard, yeah. Ron Howard, because he doesn't want to scuff the Millennium Falcon. Oh man, <laughs> I find that you so know good. that's what, here's where I love this. You know, I, when when the change was made with Lord Miller, and they. You know, there was a two or three days where we didn't know who was going to be the director of this movie. And lots of people's names were brought out. One of the names that I thought right away was Ron Howard. Because of Ron Howard's history with George Lucas, his reverence for George Lucas. His, you know, George Lucas wanted him to direct um, The Phantom Menace. I believe it was The Phantom Menace. Yes. Um, and he turned it down because he yeah, wanted George to be that. able to do it. He felt George needed to direct. Yeah, we talked about that mm-hmm. on the video on when we were doing vid- YouTube videos. Yeah, um, exclusively. Um, <laughs> he just seems like he understands Star Wars and he has a reverence for Star Wars. He's a fan, and as opposed, you know, that's what made Force Awakens work with J.J. Abrams was he loves yeah. Star Wars and he had a reverence for the story. And so, whether or not you like the fact that it feels to some extent like a rehash of A New Hope. He gets Star Wars. He understands what it is and what it isn't. And and we and we accept him, even though he's a Star Trek director. Yeah, no, we that's so him. weird. But anyway, because um, Star um, Trek is our nemesis, right? Uh, well, no, I mean, no, we, it's it's like I've described this. There's not even competition with Star Trek. It's like I like Star Trek, but I like it how I would like Indiana Jones or. Any I like franchise, it's not even <laughs> close to Star Wars. There's no competition. I agree with that. But it's, anyway, it just and, but, and we and we, you yeah. can be confident enough in your love for Star Wars to not have to throw Star Trek under the bus. And that's, right, you know, you, you, you there's know, just no competition. We don't need to argue whether or not Star Wars is better. <laughs> it is, um, and that we can still like Star Trek because we know that. But anyway, um, and Ryan Johnson loves Star Wars, and as much as people seem to be hating on him and saying that he doesn't get the story. You know, yesterday, and this is totally off track, but yesterday he tweeted out a series of images, no text at all, just images, where he addresses the backlash over the Force Phantom idea in The Last Jedi and how um, people are saying that's that's not a Force ability we've ever seen before. It doesn't make sense. So he takes the Jedi Path book that came out years, several years ago. The canon? And it's basically, I'm pretty sure it's considered canon, which is like a, an understanding of the, of, you know, sort of Jedi lore. He takes it off of, he has pictures, like a picture of his bookshelf, and then a picture of him getting a little closer to his bookshelf, and then a picture of books on it, real close. Like and then he pulls, yeah, book. yeah, so then he pulls up the book, and then he shows the cover of the book, it says Jedi Path. He opens it up, and starts turning to a specific page, and he zooms in on the page, and there's a description of Force Phantoms from Jedi Path years ago. So, so this um, has been around. So before. Ryan Johnson gets Star Wars, and for those of you that that are angry with him, um, you know, you don't have to like this movie. Nobody cares if, that you don't like this movie, right? But don't accuse Ryan of not being a Star Wars fan or dis or or dishonoring the story of Star Wars and, yeah. the, and the universe of Star Wars because he gets it, and his interpretation of it doesn't have to be your interpretation. And so um, that's just my own two cents. But anyway. Um, you know, I, I think Ron Howard was a great selection because he's like Ryan. He's like J.J. He loves Star Wars. And I th- I think the things that are coming out about this movie actually look really good. Hold on. Sneeze. Oh, see. When you tell somebody to sneeze. No, no, no. It's this, this trick. I've done it before. Okay. He's holding his finger to his nose. This trick is, a, is that. And. Okay. Um, you learned it here. Or heard it here. One of the pictures was, he said, the most interesting part of this movie is behind this wall. Whew. What was behind that wall? I'm trying to find it. Nothing. Hmm. You can't see it. Ah. He hid it. And I'm like, come on. And I'm hoping it's a castle run. Oh, there it is. Spicy. You see, yeah, spicy. You see spicy. You see it? Oh, there it is. Yeah. September 20th, yeah. 2017. Oh, he posted It's the sp- Spice Mines of Kessel. Maybe. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's clearly the Spice Mines of Kessel. Jeez Louise, I'm ready for this trailer. Are you guys? Yes. But- oh, there was one... 
picture or video video of like you know how like you can use like old trash cans as like like fire pits or whatever mm-hmm. they show that mm. and this is this shows like the underground like the the side of the galaxy that you don't normally see like you see the which is one of the things that makes Star Wars so special is it's not this perfectly pristine right um, like you see pure like, Coruscant, version of the right? future or you of see, space I'll just use Coruscant as right. an example you only see the top layer, which is the glamorous, glitzy um, part. I mean, I think it happens a little bit. You see it, you see it in Clone Wars, but you the deeper down you go, the more like it, you get into poverty or whatever. And, and so I found it funny that they you see this video of an old astromech yeah, that's I been that. gutted and the head's taken off, and they're using it as a fire pit. Found that kind of interesting. Yeah, some great images. If you haven't checked it out, it's on StarWars.com. You can find it. Yeah. It's a list of... It's just one page of all of Ron Howard's solo tweets. And it's really fun. Yeah. It's like... I could sit there and look at it for like a couple hours and go back through and think. Right. Through. It's yeah. really good. It so. is cool. Awesome. All right. So, last thing... Oh, this is me. This mm-hmm. is Sam. We're going to be talking... What are we talking? Oh, yeah. Star Wars Rebels. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we talked last week about some, or was it last week? Yep. Yeah, about some uh, titles and descriptions that got released, and that's how we got our poll or whatever. But this time, a couple more episodes have been announced, and their um, descriptions have been released. So Okay, before we get into those descriptions, we are fully aware that by the time you listen to this podcast, that the trailer for season four, mid-season trailer, has come out. And we may talk for just a couple of minutes about the mid-season trailer, but we're saving that for our patrons. And so all you have to do is go on patreon.com slash Tatooine Sons and find us and make a pledge of a dollar a month to help support this podcast. And you get access to that. And we're going to be doing a whole podcast about the Star Wars season four mid-season trailer um, in just a little bit. It'll be ready by this afternoon. It'll be out. So patrons get that. You guys don't because our patrons are... You know, patrons. patrons, and we just they deserve a little extra. So we're going to talk about that. But let's talk about these two episodes. Go, Sam. Well, the first one is called uh, "Wolves and a Door," and it airs March tenth. Nope, it doesn't. No, no, no. Okay, so the dates were wrong. We can talk about that. So the dates as of last week were like February twenty fourth was the first one, and then the next following week was the second one, and then March uh, the third, mm. I think. Of, of March was the second episode, and then the tenth is going to be the Wolves in the Door. That's all been thrown out. March, uh, February nineteenth, two episodes are airing. Uh, February, the, the following week, uh, the following Monday, two more episodes are airing, and then the the following Monday after that, March fifth, March fifth, three episodes back to back to back are going to be airing, um, and that's going to be the end of Rebels. It'll be a sad day for us. Yeah. Um, we well, hopefully, Rebels. they're releasing a new series. Yeah, absolutely. We'll talk about that on the next episode, uh, the, the other podcast. But anyway, Wolves in the Door. Do you guys? Uh, let's see. Here's the description, um, so we can talk about it. Ezra and the Ghost Crew learn the Empire has plans for the Jedi Temple on the Fall. Now let's just throw the whole Ezra is going to die in the first episode out. We know Ezra's not going to die because yeah. he's in the description of the third episode. So we know Ezra makes it through episodes one and two, which then goes with our poll, right? Kanan, right? Um, what do you think about this? Ezra and the Ghost Ezra and the Ghost Crew learn the Empire has plans for the Jedi Temple in the fall. Well, to open know. the Jedi Temple, they would have to have Kanan, or they'd they have, have to have Jedi. another Jedi. Yeah. Well, the Inquisitors got two. in, didn't they? Because they it, it takes they had two of them. So they had so well, they that throws out like Kanan or something. <laughs> Oh yeah, so Vader and Ezra are going to open the Jedi Temple on the fall. Oh yeah, together totally. we're going to do the whole Maul thing all over again. No, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. So okay. that throws out almost. Well, the we'll game. talk about that on the next, on the other podcast. But anyway, um, Ezra and the girls. So we know Ezra survives, and then the next one. What's the title, uh, Samuel? Uh, uh, the world between worlds. Huh. He's yawning. Nathan, you get to pinch it. You're yeah. yawning too. A world between worlds. A world between worlds. Okay. What is he doing? Sammy has to blow his nose. Sam. So. All right. You play Han Solo things. Yeah, dun, 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 you play that. I'm gonna head to. I don't have anything to play. 
You don't? No, we, you're going to have to stick here and, and, and muscle through here, buddy. Um, Great gonna... kids! Don't get cocky! All right, there we go. I'm going to talk more about how Porg should have been. No, let's talk about Rebels. Okay. okay. A world between worlds. Let me read the description um, of this episode. While the other rebels engage the Imperial forces outside the Jedi Temple, Ezra gains access inside and experiences a revelation. So, Kanan, most likely. A revelation? A revelation. A revelation. So, what do you guys think? So, we know Ezra's going to make it through the first four episodes. (laughs) So, he's going to make it to the finale Mm -hmm. series. uh, You know, the finale three episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on the third week, so that's good, and I think that makes sense. I mean, I kind of thought right, they were going to that way. Off he Ezra. can become a DJ. He's not going to become DJ. We may find that out. No, he is month. not DJ. Hey, at the All end right. of this I month, like we are getting DJ. a comic. Okay. Um, now we've seen the trailer, mm-hmm. so let's limit our Three conversation. Times. But let's mention one of the things that's pretty uh, clear from the trailer. And that is Kanan is going to survive the first two episodes of this show as well. And he had a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> and Hera's just like a woman. Just like a woman. He's like out there doing everything he can. To, I mean, please, I love you, Christy. If you're listening to this podcast, we, I love you. But let's be honest. If you've been married for any length of time, guys, you've experienced this moment. Uh, Hera, you know, he's gone, gone, gone out of his way to save Harry. Cut his hair in order to, we don't know why yet. Unger he's, to cover, you know, to go over to cover or something like that. He saves Hera. And what's the first thing she says? What does she say? I have to tell you something. I have to tell you something. I hate, I hate your hair. <laughs> I hate your hair. <laughs> really? Of I mean, all the things you could say in that moment? We are all kind of thinking it, though. I hate your hair? <laughs> so. It's kind of funny. It sucks. But anyway. Um... Guys out there, we all relate. We oh, he shaves his awesome beard, too. I know. Now, that's, like, sinful. <laughs> all right? That's, like, really hey, at least he oh, waited. my gosh. That was horrible. At least anyway. he waited from No Shave November. So, okay, we won't talk about the details on the trailer, but we do know that Kanan's going to survive yes. the first couple episodes. We've got some stuff on this ep- um, these episodes. My question is just a general overview of the, the remaining se- uh, half of the season from the trailer. What... Were you happy with what you saw in the trailer yes. or not? And maybe give me a little bit of detail. Samuel the Hutt, you're happy? Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, we're going to see the Emperor. Oh, don't go too far. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Listen to our our Patreon podcast. Become a Patreon. There's a little teaser for you. Oh, yeah. Stop. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> looks good. Nate, did looks, you like it? Yes. I just don't want it to end. I don't want yeah. it to end either. I'm really, really melancholy about this, these next three episodes. Oh, well, yeah, the next, like, seven episodes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what I mean. The next three weeks. But anyway. All right. Uh, that wraps up the majority of the stuff here. Um, let's talk about anything else you guys wanted to talk about that we didn't get to. Anything else? Mm, no. Nope. We covered it. We because talked we had, the DLC. Yeah. We talked the DLC. And Nathan because talked Porgs. Because we had that insane beginning. And I talked Porgs, so I'm, I'm good. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're getting close to having the number of people subscribed. We're using sort of a, a, a educated guess as far as subscribers. If you're a podcaster out there, you know you don't get to actually see how many people subscribe. But there's some tools you can use to get an educated guess as to whether or not you've got the number of subscribers. And our goal was to get to 50. We've got the reviews. We've got the ratings. Um, we're just looking to see how you guys do um, as far as downloads over the next 48 hours. And if we hit a certain number of downloads, which I think we will... Over the next 48 hours. Then next week we will be doing the uh, Leia Star Wars Celebration poster drawing. For everybody that rated and reviewed us. Or everybody that reviewed us on um, iTunes. Yeah. So get in on that. If you haven't reviewed us on iTunes, go on over there and get into the contest. That will be awesome. So Now, I, just to make sure that no one's like... I don't want anyone to get like upset or something. It's not signed. It's not no, it's not an autograph pop. No, no, no. She's, it's just she was gone before this poster was created. Right. So, so it's, so it's just a, it's just an exclusive poster. It was a, it was it's given to the cool attendees of the 40th anniversary panel at Star Wars Celebration last. It's year. still a cool poster. It's though. an amazing poster. And uh, really you, cool poster. If you want to see it, it's on. It's pinned to the top of our Twitter feed at Tatooine. Yes. Okay. All right. I just want to clear that up. So something happened. Absolutely. Let's talk about next week's poll. <laughs> 
And I thought these guys smelled bad on the outside. So, okay, so we're talking Solo, so I had to throw that in there. Um, <laughs> solo, a Star Wars story. Do we get the trailer within a week? Within two weeks? Or is there really a Star Wars uh, solo movie coming out? Or That's the, the, the poll. <laughs> the poll. Wait, there's a Star Wars movie? There's, there's a, a solo, solo movie, movie coming out? Yeah. You would think with no First trailer, time, it. it's just a bad rumor uh, that's out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. That's it. We're not upset at all. Thank right. you guys for listening. Um, support us on Patreon. Like us. Share us. Tweet us. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Tatooine Sons. Yes, so um, it is. We're on Stitcher now. So if you're listening to us on Stitcher, welcome. Stitcher's, the boys are like, what's Stitcher? Stitcher's like, outside of iTunes, the most listened, or most... Um, Used. used podcast okay. service and we're on there now so <laughs> nice. um, thank you guys for supporting us follow us on twitter at tatooine sons follow us on facebook tatooine sons so and nice. uh we will see you well if you're a patron you're gonna hear from us again today if if you're not become a patron and you can hear from us again today samuel the hut what's up the what oh yeah thank you there's an anything else Whoa. We this is almost awesome. we almost missed this one. Go to T Public T E T E E Public dot com. Search Tatooine Sons. We have Tatooine Sons shirts. We have BB Nate shirts. We have Ooh. Samuel the Hutt shirts. We have the Bowtie Jedi Guy shirts. We have mugs, phone cases, blankets. pillows, blankets, flags, tote bags. tote bags, stickers, stickers. Tapestries, pillows. wall art, Ooh. pillows. Um, pillow, yeah, I said pillows. And this is if you're looking for it, it may be, uh, listen. If you've got a little tiny Star Wars fan um, that's you know a baby, we, we have, have one, Tatooine Sons onesies. onesies. You'll yeah. probably want to get the Samuel the Hutt one because it's the coolest. No, because then that'd be kind of saying that your baby's fat. I right. seriously doubt we're going to have a lot of Bowtie Jedi Guy onesies sold. But anyway, BB Nate, I can see that happening. Oh, All yeah. right. Uh, thank you, guys. tpublic.com backslash Tatooine Sons is where you can find that. Thanks, guys. Have a great, fantastic week. Patrons, we will be talking to you soon. And just remember, um, we don't really know anything about Star Wars. We just like to talk about it. Yeah. Are you brainless? <laughs> I never ask that question till after I've done it. We're smarter than this. The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. 